Hey everyone, my name is Dennis and welcome back to another video in my channel. So in this video, I'm showing you guys how to build a complete SEO content writer from scratch. Uh, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough slash tutorial as I don't want it to get too long of a video. This video is quite long and the automation process is quite extensive, but I'm going to be showing you guys uh, a walkthrough on the steps on how to build your own content writer end to end so this is probably going to fall more into the intermediate side of skill level feel free to watch regardless as there will be something for everyone in this video i will be doing a demo first on how it works we will go through the different tools that we're needing to build this automation and lastly we're going through the different automation flows without further ado let's go and start with a quick demo so i have a website here so this is what we're using for this demo so this is a travel related blog and this is the latest article that I created. So the best shopping places in Seoul, a complete travel guide. So you can see here that there's a featured image in this article and there's a couple of paragraphs for introduction. And there's the first H2 first outline and I believe this is a second outline and there's a third outline and some details and the conclusion in the end with a couple of paragraphs. There's also a section image we're creating an image for even outlines so for every second fourth sixth outline so that we don't consume a lot of credits as far as building the images in the article and it looks for this i'm using flux so just to show you how this automation works let's go and go to a table so in a table we have a form here so where you can put the keyword in this case, I found this amusement park in South Korea. So I went to Uber Suggest. So this is the keyword that I'm using. And it gave me some content ideas. Went through all the different articles here, ranking for this keyword. And I added that keyword or that URL here to provide additional context when writing this article. The required field is the keyword where you're putting the actual keyword that you want to rank for. And optionally, you can provide URLs or a context if you want to just paste the context directly into this section but you can also provide a url where the automation is scraping this url using ap5 and it's setting the context here which is used to write the article uh, another option that you can also set is the number of outlines by default it's set to three but if you want to get a longer article you can make it four or five outlines so that's the h2s in your article and lastly you can also set the image model by default it's using the dolly but you, if you want a more realistic image, you can also use Flux for it, but by default, it's Dolly 3. So I'm showing you guys in more details how this works later on. But let's go and just pick the default Dolly option and with this keyword and the context URL, and let's submit this. All right, once it's been submitted, let's go and go back into the actual view. You can see the keyword has been added and now the status also has been in progress. None of the keywords has been set yet as that's going to go and make a call to Neural Writer to fill those keywords in place. So let's take a look at what the AI table looks like here. There's a title and the description, and there's also the article content. We're saving the output of the article that's been, been produced. And once the article has been published, we're setting the publish date. Some more fields is the Neural Writer Career ID. If you want to perform additional optimization for that query id we can also reference that query id which is why we're saving it here the post id would be the post id for wordpress so since we're also allowing it to do a rewrite for that post we can also reference that post id by filling out the post id here this is the number of outlines and also the image model in this case it's set to these two models so it's pretty straightforward in a way so currently it's still in progress while it's currently working, let's go through the different uh, columns here. The keyword, it will be a single line text. The context URL is a single line text. And the context would be a long text. The title is be a long text. The H1 terms could, that could also be pretty long. So that's a long text. H2 terms is long text. And the context terms is also long text. So we're saving all the keywords that's sent back from Learn Writer in these columns. And the status, so we're going to have about five different status here. So in progress is when we're in the process of actually doing something with that keyword or, or we want to rewrite. That's where it's set to progress. 
So it looks like it's switched to ready to write. You can see here that switched to write and the switch to in progress. So that means that it went from analysis of keyword. So now it's trying to write that article. So going back to the status here, you can see that there's the ready to write, which is what you just saw earlier, which means that it's ready to write. We're using automation in a table to perform these actions. So we have ready to write when it's ready to write and in progress while it's either doing some analysis for that keyword or it's actually writing an article. Publish is once the article has been published to WordPress and rewrite. If you're not really happy with the article, you can switch it to rewrite and it will automatically trigger an automation where it will rewrite the whole article. So right now it's in the in progress stage. So yeah, let's go and just wait till it finished and we'll go, go back and resume this demo. So after a few seconds, after I paused the video, I actually just completed. So now it's been published. Let's go back into the blog. So this is the existing blog. Let's go ahead and go to the homepage so we can see what type of article is published. So the top uh, article, that's the one that's just been published. Amusement parks in South Korea, top theme park attractions. So we have a featured image here using Dali, which is quite nice. I actually like that image. And we have an intro here, introduction to amusement parks in South Korea. And this is like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. I like this image a lot. And this is using Dolly, which is not too bad. And going down. So yeah, so there's three, three outlines. One, top theme park second. And the third one is tips for visiting amusement park. So for instance, you don't really care for this article. Let's go and switch back into that record. And we're going to go and switch this to Flux instead of Dolly. So we're going to go and switch to Flux. And we're scrolling down to the left side. And let's go and change this to Rewrite. And let's go and change this to Rewrite. And tab out of it, so out of focus. So now it should make a request to Active Pieces. And it's going to start writing this again. So now it's switched to In Progress. So let's go and pause this and come back after the article has been completed. So it looks like it's completed. You can see here that it's been published. So now we go back to the article here. It's a completely different article from the previous one. So the, off the bat, you can see that the image for the featured image has been totally been changed, more realistic. That is using now Flux for the model, including the section image. You can see that the, the second one is also using Flux. It's more hyper realistic. And yeah, so it's a totally different article altogether. You can see that there's an actual table here, which goes through and goes to all the different theme parks available in South Korea and some planning tips and recommend, recommend. That's what we're building in this automation today. Let's go and do a walkthrough of how, it, how the A table is set up. I do have this one table, which have the full view, parameters view, and the content view. And this is tied to a single form. So by default, you're going to get a full view where you're going to see all the different columns in that table. So like I mentioned before, we have the keyword context, the different keywords that we're using to store the keywords from New and Writer. We're also storing some information such as the title and the description, as well as the article content and the query ID from New and Writer. When adding a form, all you have to do is add a, a view here and you're adding a form. By default, when you add a form, you can pick from which view you want to use. Since we will only want certain options to be available when we generate the form, we want to create a view that's specific to a form. You can see that I can pick from the different view. You don't want the full view as some of these probably is not, not relevant to what we're trying to do for this form. So we want to keep it simple as possible. So all we're interested in is the keyword, the context URLs, context and the number of outlines and the image model. So we don't want anything else. So first thing first is you're going to only have this full view. So the next thing that you need to do is you add a new view with the grid view. And after you add a grid view, you can name this to however you want. So let's say you want this to be a form view, right? By default, it's going to show the whole view. So you can hide the fields here. We want to remove the title terms, all the different terms. So you want to limit the view for what we want to show in the form. So we want to remove the terms. We don't care about the status, the title, description. We don't care about the content. We, we don't care about the date published. So we can remove all these various fields until we get the fields that we really want for our form so that we can pick and set those 
parameters. We care the con about the context URL. So we care about the context and we care about actually the keyword is by default since it's the first column. We can't really change that. So if you go back to the one that we just added, you can see that you can also add the number of outlines and the image model. But you have the option to just set the keyword, different context and the number of outlines and the image model. And now when you create a new view, which for the form, now you can set it to that form view, which is limited to just those columns. So that's how you set up the columns. And I have a third view where we only want to show certain things based on what we want to look at. So the full view would include everything and the content view is where we only want to see the things that pertain to the article. So the next thing I want to show you guys inside of a table is I want to show you the automation aspect of it. After we submit the information inside of this form in a table, we're going to go and, and create an automation that's going to make a request to ActiveBesys. The way we're going to do that is we're clicking on this automation. So you can see that I have two automations set up and enabled, but let's go and take a look at the first. The first is triggered when a form is submitted, just like various, some op some various options here, such as record matches conditions, record is created and scheduled time arrives if you want to be scheduled. But since we're only interested when a form has been submitted, that's the trigger for this automation and the action would be to send a web request. So I've mentioned before that there's two parts of this automation. The first is the analysis flow automation and the second where it actually writes the article. I'm showing you guys how that looks like in a little bit, but this is the first when we submit the keyword and the context into the form, it's going to send a web request into the first automation flow. It's going to make a post request method and it's sending to this request address. And as part of this, we're sending the keyword, the record ID and the context URLs and the context. If you're not familiar how it works, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if I remove the record ID, we just have to type in the record ID and make sure that you have a properly formatted JSON here. So you don't have to do the double quotes. So the way it works is we're going to do a forward slash, and this will allow us to pick from the different options that's available. So go ahead and take a look and see the arrow. Now we can either pick from one of these fields that's available on the table. Or if you go down to the bottom, you can see that the record ID is also available as well, which is the unique identifier for a uh, row, which we, we can use to query and pick the record that we want to work against with. So now we're, for this, we're using record ID, but for the other fields, you can go and pick one of these. And the way it works is you're gonna go and just pick that record ID and we're clicking on this convert to JSON string. And that's going to automatically just surround that with a double quote to make it a valid JSON string. So that we send in the keyword, record ID, context URLs, and the context. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. And that remember that this is a, a method of post. So that's the first part of the automation. The second one that we were adding here is when a record matches a condition. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So when a record matches ready to write, once we've analyzed the keyword, in the writer and create the title and description, it's gonna go and change that, that status to ready to write, which will kick off this automation. So when a record in a table changed to ready to write, that's the trigger for this automation. If this trigger occurs, we're gonna go and make a request to active pieces. It's gonna make a post request using this webhook URL. This is going to the, the second automation flow in active piece, which is writing the article after we've analyzed the keyword. We're only be sending a single property here, which is record ID, which uh, I've shown you guys earlier how to do. So we're going to be adding the record ID and the second condition. So we're doing an, an or, or condition for the trigger. So if it matches a ready to write status or the status is a rewrite. If it's new article or it's a rewrite, we're going to go and trigger this automation, right? So if it's a rewrite, it's also going to go into the, uh, the same webhook automation flow in active pieces. So that's that for the A8 table side. And let's go and take a look at how everything works so you can see visually how the whole automation starts. So before we go and start this whole automation, I just want to give you a general overview of how everything ties together. So I added this board mix. I give you a demo of how it works in the AA table side. So this is the whole automation flow, just to give you a top to bottom uh, overview. So everything's been submitted. 
inside of a table, we add the keyword in the optional context or the context URL. It's going to make a call into the first automation flow in Actipesis. So it's a webhook trigger. We're passing in the keyword and the record ID. And we're going to make a request to Neuron Writers API and create a query for that keyword, which we're receiving the different data points, such as the keyword for the H1, the H2, and for the content and for the tallow and description. And we're using that and we're updating a table's record with those details. And as part of this first automation flow in active pieces, we're generating the tallow and description. We're using Straco's API to generate these two information. And if the context URL is provided, we're performing some web scraping for this URL's content. And we're using API actor to crawl this website's content. After that's been completed, everything is flushed back into up uh, AA table with the keywords. So really the whole intent and purpose of the first part of this automation is to analyze the keyword and perform some uh, some preparation uh, before build, building the actual article later on. So that's the first part of this all, whole automation. Once it's completed and it's been set to ready to write, it's going to make a request to the second webhook in Activesis. All this automation is happening in a table where it's triggering this whole automation to webhooks from there. So the second part would be actually writing the article. It's going to call on the second webhook trigger, which we're passing in the record ID. We're using that record ID to extract the keyword and the title description from the previous step, including the context, which we're using to actually write the article. We're writing the outline using Straco's API and we're generating the featured image, which we're calling a third webhook flow in, inside of Active Pieces. The third automation flow is this image generator automation in Active Pieces, where it's only responsible for the image generator of the whole automation flow. Since we have two models that we support for this automation, one is Flux and one is Dolly, so we're checking if the model passed in is flux. We're using fall AI to generate the image. Otherwise, we're using Straco's API to generate the Dolly image. So this is what we're using to generate the featured image. And also for each section, we're generating an image as well. The same webhook URL is used to generate the image. And we're generating each sections for the article based on the outline. So we're creating the main article based on the outline and the featured images. So once the article has completed, we're packaging everything up and publishing it to WordPress. And that completes the whole automation, which goes back here and it's set to publish. Now, if there's any reason that you don't like the article or the image that's been produced, or if you want to switch to a different model for your image, you can go and switch the model for the image to something else. So we can switch the status to a rewrite, which will automatically kick off the automation once again and this time it's going to skip the first automation and it's going to go straight to the second automation instead of having to redo the whole process of analyzing the keyword once again and scraping the website content it's going to go and reuse the same uh, information from the from the previous automation and it's going to focus on just rewriting that article so that's how everything looks like uh, end to end of how this automation is going to look like we're going to go and take a look at the technologies that we're using for this automation demo. So let's quickly walk through what we're using today uh, in this automation. So you've seen a table before. So I've shown you the demo of how it works inside of a table. When the whole automation process kicks off, we're sending a request to NeuronWriter API to uh, create a query for that keyword. And we're going to get back to H2, H1 and the different keywords that we are using for the article. We're using Straco's API as well to generate the title and description and the whole article itself as far as the text. And we're also using the image generation for the Dolly model. Activities is also used. And in addition to that, we're also using Fall, Fall AI to generate a Flux image. Since we're supporting both Dolly and Flux for our image generation, we're using Fall AI as the service for generating the image as far as the website content uh, scraper, we're using AP5 since it's free. Uh, you get a $5 free cr uh, credit per month that you can use for any type of purpose. One of which is 
you can use it for website content crawler if we provide a url we're using abify actor for it let's go and go through all the different tools that we have here so i've shown you the ai table already i'm showing you guys the active basis and straco in a little bit but let's go and go to uh, neural writers api and check it out I i'm on the documentation here for neural writer things are up to the top it will give you some idea of how you can get your api key which you're needing for this whole automation so you can retrieve it from your neuron api access from your account if you go to your profile underneath the neuron api access you can copy your neuron api key so you go and copy that and set it aside for this demonstration and automation we're using a couple of methods here the first one is we're submitting a new query using this endpoint this is the base api endpoint and we're using the new query to make a request and submit for that project and after it's completed we're going to go and make a request to get query which we're able to retrieve the keywords such as the terms and also the things that we can use to write the article for the title and some of the content keywords that we're using so that's for the neuron writer side the next is we're using ap5 for web scraping the content you can see i already ran it a few times so this is the actor that we're using. We're using the website content crawl. crawl. So I'm adding this in the description of the video so you can go straight to this. But essentially, this requires the website that you're trying to scrape. And you can test it here and you can provide some additional options as well. We can run this from active pieces by communicating to it via their API. So once you're here on the actors on the top right hand side, you can run this actor via the different api clients and also the endpoints and you can also run it from the cli we're using the api clients since we can run node.js inside of active piece of code so this is the code that we're adding in today it's going to require the api token so you're going to have to log in into your api account and retrieve the api token this is we're passing the url and the rest of these are pretty much optional so the only thing that we need, really need for this is the start url which is what we're using to scrape so that's for ap5 it's the next tool that we're using we're using fall ai the way you can interact with their api is you're going to have to go to their api keys section you can create and add your key i added active pieces key and you can just copy that key and store it somewhere let's say i create a single article with two images it only is going to cost me five cents for two images but you can also use Shaco's API as well to generate the Dolly image if you want to use the credits in Shaco. Those three are what we're using today. So let's go ahead and walk you through the different automation flows inside of Active Pieces. There's actually three automation involved in this if you count the gener generate image uh, flow. Let's take a look at the first part of this automation. This is the analyze keyword in Learn Writer. It should be something like prepare article for write, writing and that should be the, the name of this flow but essentially this is triggered from a table from the automation so this automation is when the form has been submitted we're going to make a request which we're passing the keyword record id context urls and the context so that's received inside of this webhook if i pull this up you see the context is now the keyword and the record id and the context url is provided once we receive the different parameters inside of this body, we're going to go and retrieve the neuron writer inside of the storage. Once we get the key, we're going to go jump into the next step. We're going to make a simple HTTP request to neuron writers API. If you go back to the, their documentation, the show URL looks like this. The base URL for the API query for neuron writer is for this URL. And we're using the new query, which we're going to make a request to that uh, endpoint to create a query for the project. We're passing in the x-api-key for the headers, which we're pulling the API key. You can hard code your API key here if you want, but I chose to just store it in storage. But essentially for the body, we're passing in the, the engine. It could be from UK, google.com, or from the US, which in which case we're using google.com. So you can uh, create your JSON structure. And the way to pull the information from the webhook is Go, go to your webhook and go to your body and we're going to pass in the keyword and that will insert the keyword inside the parameter of the body so that's the keyword and for the project so you have to go back into neuron writer so inside my project here in neuron writer inside of this project 
the one that I'm interested in here is for this YouTube demo project, I'm going to grab the ID from the URL from the top and just copy this. And that will be the project ID for a new writer when, ma when making requests. You can go to space that here as part of the project. And for the language, I'm set it here as English. So those are the four parameters that we need to pass in when we make a query to Neuron Writers API. So once we submit the request, it's going to go and process this in the background. This process might take anywhere from 20, 30, up to 60 seconds. Once it goes to the next step, we're going to go ahead and add the code. The two things that we're passing in as part of this code is the API key, which is we're using the same API key that we retrieved earlier from storage and the query ID. When you make a request to uh, the Neuron Writers API, it's going to go and send you back. First of all, you're going to get the status of 200, which means it's successful. And the second thing that you're going to receive back is the query ID, which is in this form. It's going to give you the query and the query URL and the short share URL and the read only URL. We're only interested in the query, which is the query ID here, which we're using later on to retrieve that query when it's completed analyzing the keyword. We're passing that API key and the query ID, which we retrieved from the previous step. And inside the code, we're adding a reference to a dependency. We're using Axios to make an HTTP request call. So essentially, we're providing here the base URL for the Neuron Writer, and we're adding a delay here for 20 seconds. This is similar to the video that I've created previously. So if you haven't watched my Neuron Writer's video, which is on this URL, this is also going to help you understand the process a little bit more. And the main goal for this automation is really package everything up, everything from the WordPress publishing, coming from the Neuron Writer side, which you know, we're using to analyze the keyword and we're using the same thing as what I did on this video. And if you want a recap of how to use Active Pieces in general, you can go and check out my video on Active Pieces Crash Course. The entry point to this automation is this code block, which we're going to go and accept the inputs. We're taking in the API key and the query ID. So what we're doing here is we're calling this function. We're going to be making a call to this, which is an async function. It's a get query. And we're going to be structuring the API key and the query ID, which we're using to make a call into the Neuron Art Writers API. We're using the base API URL here from the top that we declared earlier. And on top of that, we're doing a forward slash get query. So we're retrieving the results back from Neuron Writer. So if you go back to the documentation, we're making a call to this get query. And the response is all these different informations. We're interested in the terms as those are the keywords that we're using to build our article later on. So we're going to make a call to this URL and we're doing an infinite loop while to true. So it's going to keep uh, repeating over and over. So we're going to make a call to that query on the top to this URL and we're passing the query ID and we're passing in the API key as part of this base query call. More in this little bit, but once this response has come back and completed, it's going to return a status. So if it's ready, that means that the analysis for that keyword has been completed, which we're going to return that response. Otherwise, we're going to go and add a delay here for 20 seconds, which we've de declared on the top. So we've declared 20,000 milliseconds, which is 20 seconds. So we're going to add a delay here before making a call again if the status of the response is not ready. So as far as query, we're calling this function of the base query, which is taking in the URL, the API key, and the parameters. So this is specific to making a call to Neuron Writers API, which requires the x-API key to be present. We're setting the content type and accept to application-json with this URL that we're gonna be passing in as well. This is gonna return the response.data, which is the body that's returned back from Neuron Writer. So if you go back here, it's returning all these details and data. So once we get that, we're also going to get the response or the status for that re request. If it's ready, that means it's ready. Otherwise, it's going to go ahead and just keep going through and making a request to it. And after it's completed, it's going to go up to the top. We're retrieving this terms.txt. So we're going to be going parsing that query and we're updating the terms. We're just going to grab the different uh, parts of the text and since the response is a new line we're going to go and comma separated those response so once we get the actual keywords itself we're going to go and return it which is going to look like this 
you're going to see the entities with the different keywords, comma separated. But the content basic is the keywords that we're using for the actual article itself is also comma separated. And there's also the content extended as well, where it has all these keywords. If we decide to use these keywords later on, we can use it. Surprisingly, I don't see any other options aside from the H1, H2 title. There's also the description title as well, but I don't see anything as far as what they have here. So they don't, they don't have the competitors and ideas for some reason. We're just going to go ahead and stick to the basics and just use the keywords. So after that, we're going to go and save it inside of uh, a table. After we got the keywords, we're going to go and move to the next step, which is to do web scraping. We're using AP5 for this. If the context URL is provided, it's going to go and check the body of the parameters if the context URL is provided. If it's provided, provided that means that we need to scrape that URL, which we're retrieving the API key from the storage. I, I stored the API key and the different keys inside of the storage ahead of time, and I can just pull it whenever I need to make a request to that service. Once you get the API key, we're going to go and add a code piece here. In this, I named it Run API Web Content Crawl Crawler Actor. This accepts URL. So if you go back into the actor inside of web, uh, website content crawler, it accepts a single parameter, which is the start URL. And the way you can use this is if you go to AP5 and if you go to AP5 clients, they provide a node uh, JSDK that allows you to interact with their AP5 and just only provide the token and the parameters that's involved into running this actor. I've actually looked at all the options here and since we're only interested in scraping a single URL for uh, content, we're not really interested in some of these options, but we're only using the start URLs. You can go and copy this whole code and you can add it to the code. The main thing that we're interested in here is we're passing in the URL and we're also needing the actor. The actor really pertains to the actual actor. You can see that URL, it starts with the an A and, and it ends before the input. So that's the actor and we're calling and we're passing in the input that data set and we're passing in the run variable here with the default data set ID and it's the listing of the items. The whole point is we're going to make a request to this and it's going to run in the background and it's doing some web scraping. And after it's completed, we're going to go and wait until it finishes and we're grabbing the content for that website. So. That's where we're adding in a code. So we're passing in the URL, which is the URL that we're going to be web scraping the content for. And we're passing in the actor ID, which is going to change depending on the actor you're using inside of AP5. But we're using the same actor ID and you have to pass in your API key. So those are the three parameters for this code. If you go switch to dependencies, you can add a package here. We're only needing the AP5 client library. So you're going to go and add that package and you can add the package name, which is api-client. And once you add that, it's added to the dependencies list. Switching back to the code, we don't really need the interface, but it's nice just to see what parameters are being passed in. But we're passing the api key, the actor ID, and the URL. So this is the type of the inputs. And we're just calling this crawl website content after it's completed. So we're going to go and pass in the inputs, and we're going through this function call website content. We're destructuring the API key, actor ID, URL. Same thing as the parameters that we passed in here as part of this code execution block. Like I mentioned before, the only thing that we need is the URL. So the way you can pass in the parameters is with this type of object. You're setting the start URLs, which accepts an array of URL objects. And we're using the save markdown equals to true, but by default it's set to true anyway. So we don't necessarily need this, but I just want to add it just to be more explicit. And for the client, we're going to be instantiating a new instance of that AP5 client, which we're referencing here from this library, AP5 client. We're just going to create a new instance of that. So a client equals to new AP5 client, and we're passing in an object that contains the token, which is the AP5 key. Similar to the documentation earlier, you can see that I'm creating a new constant for run. And we're calling that actor ID and we're passing in the actor input as part of this call function. Once that's completed, we're actually listing the items. We're driving the items that we retrieve back from this. So this is going to return once the actor has completed running and it's got the actual content inside of this. So it's inside of this items object as part of the result. 
So once we get the items, it's going to go and return that from the coloring block, which we're calling and returning uh, once we execute that function. Once you run this, you're going to get something like this, where you're going to get the URL and the actual text. Since we've specified the markdown, we also have additional properties here where it gives us a markdown property, which gives you like a markdown formatted co content. And it gives you some other metadata here as well, as far as the depth, how far did it go and scrape that URL and load time and how long it took to process and the HTTP status code. And that's that for AP5. So once we got that uh, whole content from AP5, we're going to go and save the context inside of the storage as we're needing that later on when we store it inside of a table. So the reason why we're storing it inside of a, a storage is because uh, there's a condition if we don't provide the URL and if the context is provided, we're going to go and save that context straight to the context. Otherwise, we're going to go and save the script content from the website into this context. Take notice that we're running it inside the scope of run. So we want to limit this context into the running uh, automation. And one thing that you also notice here is, I forgot to mention, is whenever you're executing something that's based on API, I also do a re retry on failure. So we want to make sure that we can retry when there's a failure. So if you go here to this, I'm also doing a retry on failure here. And also I'm doing a continue and failure just because really the context for this URL is not really a necessary step. It's not really a uh, make or break. Uh, so we can allow this to uh, push to the next step if it fails for some reason, but we're also, also going to allow it to retry if there's a failure that happens. I hope that really makes sense. Once we get the context, we're going to retrieve it. So this is the actual scrape content from AP5 and uh, we're retrieving it using this key of context. Once we get that, we're going to go and generate a title. We're using Straco's Ask AI action, and we're going to be using this connection and we're using the model uh, GPT-40 mini. As far as the prompt, we're using this prompt, act as an experienced SEO expert and generate an SEO optimized title for a blog article. Keep the length 60 characters and less and use as many keywords from pro provided list as possible while ensuring that the title is compelling and attracts users or readers. The idea behind the article is with the long tail keyword. So we're passing in the keyword here and the additional keywords that we retrieve from the Neuron Writers title keywords. Ensure that the title is succinct, engaging, and aligns with the best SEO practice to maximize org organic traffic. And we're using some negative keywords here as well. So eliminate some words that we don't want to see as far as this title. Same thing for the description and we're passing in the same for the keywords. We're passing in the desk title, which were retrieved from under writers API. And the same thing for the keywords, we're passing in the long tail keywords as that's what we're using to base this description off. And similar to the title, we also want to add some information such as what words we need to avoid when generating the description. And after that, so we got the title description, we got the actual context for the article, if we pass that in or a context that we provide and the Neuron Writers keywords, we're going to go and flush that inside of a table. So we're pulling in a update record and we're using the same connection and we're pointing to that same uh, data sheet that I was doing a demo earlier on and we're setting the record ID, which we pass in as part of the request to this webhook. The only thing that we're interested in here is the context, which is what we get back from AP5 and the different terms. So the title terms, H1 terms, the H2 terms, these are all coming in from the Neuron Writer. Just to give you a quick demo for the H2 terms, I'll remove it to give you an idea how it works. We're going to go and go to the Neuron Writer, which is the Neuron Writer's uh, get keywords. We're looking for the H2 terms. So that's what we're saving on this one, inserting that to populate this field with the terms that came back from Learn Writers API. Same thing for the content terms, we're just storing the content basic. And for the extended terms, we're sending it to the extended terms from Learn Writer. And we're setting the status to ready to write. So after we set it to the status of write, this is going to automatically kick off the next part of the automation, which is going to start writing the article itself. That's why we're setting it to, and we're also setting it the title and description, which is what we get back from the Stracos 
ask AI step. And the neuron writer query ID is part of this third step. If you go back here in the top, whenever you make a request, like I mentioned, you get query ID back. So if you want to add, add additional requests to neuron writer in the future, we can go and use this neuron writer's query ID again and repurpose it. So everything else is the same here. You notice here that I'm also retrying on failure. So since we're making an API request, a request. so we just want to make sure that if for some reason AI tables service goes down for a split second, we can go and retry this on failure so that we can recover and perform the next part of the automation. So let's go and take a look at the second part of this automation. So before we, we, we move on and go to the next automation or the second automation, let's go and take a look at the third automation, which I briefly mentioned is what we're using to generate the image. Instead of having to create all the images in the various part of the automation flow, I went and refactored it a little bit and made a separate webhook automation for just generating the image. So that later on, if you want to introduce a different model for generating the image, we can do that much easier through this single automation webhook flow. So we're adding a catch webhook here, which we're passing in two parameters. One is the model and the second one is the prompt. Since we're supporting Flux and Doll E3 models right now, those are the only thing that we're going to be doing a conditional for. So we're doing a branch here and determining what type of model is being passed in. We're checking if the body's webhook, right, what type of model it is. So if it's a flux, we're going to go and continue on the true side of the branch. Otherwise, it's going to fall into the false, which is going to default to a dolly model three. So let's go and take a look at the fall, uh, fall AI first. So I went and added the fall AI key uh, to storage at the time, so I don't have to show it to you. But this is a completely optional step. Um, you don't have to add this. You can go and insert your API key directly into the code, which we're adding next. So we're adding in a code piece. So I'm adding a code piece, which accepts uh, two parameters, an API key and a prompt. You, you can inject or add your API key directly here, or you can pull it from the storage, like how I have it uh, in my example here. As far as the prompt, this is the prompt that's passed in as part of the webhooks uh, payload body. So you can see the prompt that's been uh, passed in from the feature image or the section image, depending on where it's coming from. So we can be, we can pass in the prompt and the model is coming from a table when we store the selected model uh, for this record. So once we got that in place, we're going to go and look at the code. So if you go back here into Fall AI, you can generate your keys using the API keys in your dashboard section. And that's how you're able to add the keys in your Fall AI. As far as actual interacting with the API for Fall, we're using this library from NPM. It's Fall AI and the serverless-client. That's the name of the NPM library that we're using. And we're configuring that object with credentials and we're passing in the Fall AI key here. And once we got that, we're declaring the fall on the top and we're subscribing to that model. So we're going to go with fall AI dash dev for our model. We're passing in the fall AI here. And for flux, since we don't care about stability AI or stable diffusion, we're passing in the prompt. And once we get the result, we can return that back into the calling code. Let's go and take a look at how it works. So inside of the code here, like I mentioned, we're adding this library. We're going to go and add a package for that by adding a package and clicking add. And that will add the fall AI serviceless, serverless client into the list of dependencies into this code. The next is we're taking a look at the code. We're doing an import as file from this library. As the first thing, we're declaring the dependency on the top and we're calling this code is executed when it first calls this code step. What we're doing here is we're destructuring the API key and the prompt, which corresponds to the, the two inputs that we have. And we're calling this function called generate image with file. So this is an asynchronous function that's accepting those two parameters, the API key and the prompt. And like I've shown you earlier, you can figure in the file.config with the credentials that we're passing here, the API key. And after that, we're calling the file.subscribe. So essentially we're, we're passing the the model that we're using, which is fall AI flux slash dev. That's the model that we're using and we're subscribing to this call so that when the service completes generating the image, we're just going to assign the result 
into this result variable here and we're going to pass that back into the column code so we're passing the result back that we return from this function into the client since we're calling this code is returned into this output once we actually get the output or result back from file ai we're going to get the seed the prompt and some other metadata here such as the timings the one thing that we're interested in here is the images array it's going to return the object of url which we're interested in as far as the image that was generated and it gives you the width and the height and the uh, type of content that you generated one thing that i noticed here is the png doesn't really match the content type that was sent back so that's probably a bug on our side but nonetheless we're using this url uh, png for this image and we're setting this in the next step which when we add the image url to storage we're just going to add a step here where we're setting the storage for this key for this image so if we fall on the side where we're not using flux for the model that means we're using dolly dolly 3. we're just adding a straco and we're using the image generation action from it we're setting the api key that we've set here for the connection and we're only generating for one image for this action as far as the image dimension, this is really up to you and how you want to set this. You can set it to landscape or portrait, but I find that square would probably be the best, best size as far as WordPress, but you can set it to landscape as well. I just went with square for this example. For the description, I'm just passing in the prompt that we received from the webhook. This is the prompt that we received when we call this webhook. And lastly, we're setting the retry on failure. Anytime we make an external API call, we want to make sure that we, we do a retry just in case the API service go, goes down for some reason and we want to be able to do a retry just in case something happens. And we want to make sure that we do a retry here. Same thing when we're making a request to follow AI service. Lastly, uh, when this comes back, we're going to get back the price and the images in this array. So that's what we're setting here in the storage. We're using the same key as the other side of the branch. Uh, we're setting the image. You're going to go and go to the generate image using Straco. And you're going to go to images and then you're picking the first image from that array. And after that, we got the image in this key and which we're using now to retrieve once we get past that condition. We're getting the image URL, which, which could be coming from the flux side or the Straco side. So we're using this key, we're just going to go and we're retrieving that URL for the image. Once it's been completed, we're going to return that response and we'll send back a 200 response with a JSON body. So we're setting the JSON type uh, response to be a JSON. And for the, the JSON body, we're going to pass back a single property of URL and we're passing in the result from the image URL. So for the image URL, we're going to go ahead and just pass in the URL. So way to do that is we're going to go and insert inside of the book codes here. We're just going to go and insert that. And that should be the URL. And that should be it for this automation flow. So we've gone through the first step of pre preparing the keywords, creating the title, set, uh, creating the description. We've also done the scraping of the content for URLs for the context. And we've also gone over the second automation or the third automation, which is to uh, generate image for our article. So we've created two webhooks so far. So lastly, we're going over the last webhook automation, which is the automation that runs and create the article and publishes to WordPress. So this is going to be a catch. We're using a webhook to kick off this automation. So this is the URL that we're calling from a table. If we go back here and go to automation, we have a second call to the webhook when the record matches a condition that is ready to write or the record matches the status of rewrite we're going to make a call to this webhook so we're making a call here and we're passing in the record id to identify and so we can retrieve the keywords and the context and all that information from that automation so that's the webhook url that we're calling here which is on this automation this is the webhook for that and Really, we're passing in the record ID, which will retrieve from the body of the request. Next, we're adding a find records from a table. It's an action from that. And we're using the connection that we have set up for our API table. And we're using that space and we're pointing to that data sheet. So we're pointing to that same content writer 2.0 data sheet. 
that we looked at earlier and we're passing in the record id that we received from the body we're passing it here inside of this the record id is coming from the body from the webhook and we're just setting it here so that's pretty simple typically when you make a call to this find records you're going to get an array of records since we're passing in a record id we should only be getting one from this is or we're only interested in the first result that we get back from making a call using the find records in the AI table. So we're getting the record pertaining to that record ID, which is the title. We're going to get the context that we scraped from using AP APFI. And we're getting some other keywords as well. So there's a lot of stuff here, the context terms, title, description, and some other data here that we can use to build the article later on. So the, the next step is we're adding a branch here. So we're determining if the record data total is greater than zero. So we just want to make sure that when we make a call to a table, there's actual records in it. We don't want to be pulling a record ID that doesn't really exist. So we're going to make sure that there's some actual records in there. Once we got that, but we're going to have to add a connection step here. Can we do a connection and read connection? So we're going to go read the connection from WordPress since later on we're making a call to a custom uh, API call that's not available in active pieces. So we just want to make sure that we can read back the, the username and password so that we can make a call later on using code and upload the image into WordPress. So that's why we're adding this step here. So all you have to do is you have to specify you have to add this read connection and then you have to specify the connection name. So whatever you call your uh, the connection for WordPress, you have to specify here. And this is going to give you back the username and the password. We're just reading the connection back so we can reuse it uh, for any custom calls. So that's why I'm setting a connection here, but I'm not going to go and highlight it because it includes uh, my username and password, which is sensitive information. Once we get the uh, connection established, I want to get all the connections first uh, in the automations just to get it in place and the next step is we're going to do a update into a table just to give us a visual representation of where we at in the process so we can see that there's actually something happening so all we do here is we're just adding a update record action inside of a table and using the same data sheet and with the record id i are passing it here and all we're doing here is we're setting the status to in progress. And that's all we're setting here. But we're also retrying a failure just in case, since this is an API call, we want to make sure that we can retry this process if something happens. Next thing that we're doing here is we're introducing an ask AI step from Straco. And we're setting the API key and you can use whatever model that you want here, but I chose GPT-40 mini for this and for the prompt act an experienced content marketer and SEO specialist, I want you to create a detailed article. Yeah, so I want you to create, so this is the number of outlines. So if you go back here into a table, we have an option here where we can specify the number of outlines that we, that we want to create an article for. So for, for default, we've set it three. So if it's three de detailed article outlines using the context provided to go to a guideline for a blog title and we're passing in the title here from a table and each outline should feature a, feature, a series of well-organized subheadings that guide the reader through the topic so we want to make sure that the outline that it creates flows with each other we just don't want any random outline to be generated return the article outline in json array format do not include additional comments or markdown formatting the result tends to have markdown formatting so we want to make sure that it's just going to return the output. We're providing an example as well. The, ob the object in the array should only include the outline title and the purpose. So the H2s and the purpose, the intent of that section. And we're providing the context that we've scraped from the article, from a URL, if it exists, which we're providing here at the bottom. So the result when we execute this looks something like this, where we have one, two, three outlines, since we've set it to only generate three outlines and it creates an outline title, we got the JSON array. We're gonna go and convert that to an actual object so that we can work with it inside of the automation. We're gonna add this JSON piece, which we're using to convert text to JSON, and we're gonna be passing in the result of the Straco's create article outline output. We're also gonna be using that same outline that we produced from step six from Straco, and we're just gonna comma separate it. So we're passing the whole list 
but since we're using it later on for our future prompts we're gonna go and just comma separate it since everything right now is in a, a json format so we're just gonna go and just get the actual outlines and next we're calling the third automation which is for generating the image remember earlier that i walked you through the flow for generating the image so we're pasting the url for that webhook and we want to make sure that we're doing a slash thing here since we're expecting a response back from that webhook and we're also making a post request and we're setting it to form data. So instead of JSON body, we just went with the form data. From the active pieces, pieces perspective, it doesn't really matter since the body is still passed in the same way and we're retrieving the records or the parameters the same way. So it's just easier for us to just set the different parameters here for the form data. So I have the model, which we're setting it to either the flux or the dolly three model, which is coming from a table. And the prompt would be for the featured image. This is the prompt act, act is a graphic designer. You have been tasked with creating a hyper realistic featured image for a blog post title. And we're passing in a title, which is coming from a table. Design an image that will catch the reader's attention, convey the essence of the blog post content and be visually appealing both on desktop and mobile. So that's the prompt and that's the model. When that webhook respond we're going to get back the body and the url hopefully you can remember that we're getting back the url and that's either the fall ai api response or from straco which is they're using amazon All right. so once we get the url we're going to go and introduce a loop on items and we're using the article outline that we converted into json object on step seven when we converted the outline into json from straco we're going to loop through that array so if I remove this and set it, we're going to choose that option. This is an array where it's going to go in and insert. And once you retest it, you can see that the, each item has a purpose and the outline title. And it also has an index, which is important later on because we're needing that when we generate an image. Next is we're going to be creating a mini article within the article itself. Basically for each outline of the article, we're creating two or three paragraphs for that. So it's like a mini article within an article and we're stitching all that together as a whole once we build the whole article so we're creating mini sections we're going to be creating content for each outline act and experienced seo content writer your task is to write a detailed two to three paragraphs using the provided context as a reference if possible for this section title so we're specifying the outline title which is uh, for each section title this is not the article title this is just for that section and in markdown format in the topic, which is the purpose of that section. You can play around with the paragraphs here, the number of paragraphs, how big you want each section to be. I just specified two to three paragraphs, but if you want a beefier article, you can increase that number a bit more. So if you make it five, you'll have five paragraphs for that section of the article. So including some of the terms, focus on the main points of the topic only and avoid using introduction, overview, and conclusion as a section that will be used to form the complete article. Sometimes the, the AIs tend to include introduction or conclusion as part of the main section and it doesn't really flow. So we want to make sure that it avoids adding some introduction or conclusion or overview or whatsoever as part of this like mini outline section. And structure the outline with H2 and H3 headings, subheadings, tables, and bullet points. To ensure comprehensive coverage of the topic, please ensure the output is concise and free of extra comments, focusing solely on delivering the detailed outline requested. And that's that for the outline. If you look at the result, you can see that there's an H2 heading, there's an H3 heading, and it has some lists, and some of them are bolded. You can see that the highlights are bolded, and there's also some tables structures as well, and some H3s, and some bold. So there's like some formatting involved in Markdown format, which we're converting later on into HTML, which what WordPress is expecting. So next is we're introducing a math helper. So this is a, a, a modulo. So we're only creating an image if it's divisible by two. Since we want to include an image for every other outline, we want to include it for even numbers. So for two, four, six, eight, and so forth. Every time we iterate on an item in an array, we're given an index. So we're just checking if that's divisible by two. We're doing a modulo and passing in this two as a second number. So if it's divisible by two, it's zero. Otherwise, it's one. Next step, 
to check if it's zero. So if it's zero, that means that we're creating an image for it, which goes in the, the true side of the branch. So let's zoom in a little bit more. So in this section, we're calling the same webhook that we've called earlier for our featured image, calls to that URL in forward slash sync. And we're passing in the parameters here, such as the model. Uh, the main difference is this uh, prompt is specific to the section of the outline. So act as a graphic designer. You've been tasked with creating a hyper realistic image for a section image four, and we're passing in the outline title. Design an image will, that will catch the readers. Once we get back the image URL, you see it here that we're going to get back the URL in the form of ng. So it's either from file or straco. And once you get the image URL, we're adding a code here. So the, the code piece is pertaining to actually uploading the image into WordPress. Since Active User doesn't have any actions pertaining to uploading image into uh, WordPress yet, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, up make an, uh, a custom code inside of the code piece. Since we're doing an upload and we re we're using form data, we're doing all this in code. Uh, since this is the only way we can do this for now, we're passing in a few things. So the alt text, the file URL, which we're downloading for this code and we're uploading into WordPress. So whether it's coming from file AI or Straco, we're downloading that image first and we're uploading it into WordPress and the password and username. And that's why we added a section here for retrieving the WordPress connection so we can use the username and password in this step. So we're requiring these four parameters when we call this code piece. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this code does. So as far as dependency, we're adding the form data that will allow us to add a form data inside of Node.js, inside of the code. And I'm using the active pieces common library. So I'm just gonna go and utilize that here. We're gonna go ahead and reference those two on the top of the code for the form data and also using the HTTP client method and the type for the types and the functions that we're using in this upload. Inside of this code, we're just going to go and destructure the, the different variables. So the username, the password, the file URL, and the alt text for that image. For the alt text, we're just using the outline title. So if we go back to the article, each of these outline, for instance, this would be the outline. So we're just setting it the same outline title into the image just to match it just to keep it simple but feel free to change that if you want so the first thing we're doing here line 10 is we're going to be creating a constant here for file and we're calling this function and we're passing in the file url so what we're doing here is if you go down to the bottom is we're calling this function that accepts a file url we're doing a fetch to make an http request call and we're doing a get and the, if the response is a non-200 response we're just gonna go ahead and throw a new error. Otherwise, we're just gonna go ahead and extract. So we're gonna create an image as a buffer and we're converting the array buffer to a buffer here and we're returning that image buffer. So once we get the actual image in memory, it's set to this constant of file and we're using that file to upload into WordPress. So we're setting a variable called upload media and we're awaiting this function. So we're setting the username, password and the file that we retrieve when we download the file and alt text, everything on this upload media, right? So let's go and take a look at what the upload media function looks like. So it's an asynchronous function that accepts all these different uh, parameters. So we're using the form data to build the form data object. We're pending the file itself. And optionally, we're setting the file name here. We probably don't need this. But we're just setting the file name. And we're also including the alt text as part of this form data. So once it's done, we're just going to go and make a constant here, upload media con uh, response, which we're using HTTP client send requests. We're expecting the ID to come back from the HTTP response from WordPress as we have here. So this is like, this is a TypeScript syntax. We're making a, a post request and we're going to go into this URL. So you have to change this to go to URL. This is currently just hard coded to my URL, but everything else should be the same WP JSON wp version 2 media and as part of the body we're just passing in the form data and for the headers it's a content type of multi-part slash form dash data that's the headers and for the we're using the type of basic so if you're using something like fetch or axios you're gonna have to pass in a base64 encoded username in string format since we're using active pieces 
library is like a wrapper for making this type of authentication. So instead of doing that, we're just going to go ahead and pass in the username and the password. And behind the scenes, it's going to combine the username and password. And once it's done, the response is going to set back into this constant, upload media response. And inside of the body, it's going to have the ID. So the ID is going to be specific to WordPress. So every time you upload a media to WordPress or a post, it's always given an ID. And that's what you can use to identify an object or a post or a media inside of WordPress. And that's why we're needing that ID to retrieve the URL for this upload. We're going to get an output such as this. This is the identifier for the media that we just uploaded. That means that it's, it's good. We got the ID back from WordPress API and we can use that on the next step. So that's that for the code piece as far as uploading the media for that section. Next is we're adding a get media details here. We're adding a, a custom API call uh, from WordPress. Since this is a simple call, you don't really need a code for this. So we're going to have to change this into your URL. Everything else should be the same. It should be forward slash WPJSON, uh, forward slash WP slash V2 slash media slash, and this will be the ID. So after the slash is the ID that we get back from the previous step. So if I delete this one, we want to make sure that we're pointing this, we're inserting the actual ID for the media. And we're using the method of get to retrieve the details for this media. And this will give you some metadata specific to that media that we just uploaded, such as the link for that media, the type of it's a post, a slug type of media was uploaded. In our case, it's an attachment. We're interested in the source URL. And there's some other things here that you're probably might interested in in as a, such as the sizes, uh, if you want to go with the smaller resolutions, 1792, for instance. But we're just going to go and stick with the source URL. We're going to be concatenating the R URL and the source URL that we get back here. And that's pointing to the correct location where the image so we can reference it in the blog post. So once we've done that, we're going to go and add the source URL into the storage. I'm adding here a markdown type of format. When we create a markdown for image, it's usually using the syntax. So there's like an exclamation and a square brackets. And inside of the square bracket would be your alt tag. And you're, you're going to have your uh, parentheses here. And this is a URL to the actual image. So the, really, when you create an image for markdown, this is what the code syntax is going to look like. Right, so that's what exactly what we're doing here. We're just putting together the alt text and then we're doing the domain and the, the, the slash is already in there as part of the source URL. So it's going to be a slash source URL. And we're adding a couple of line breaks after that. So just give us some room for the article. Since the reason why we're adding it into storage is because there's cases where we're not going to be creating an image for that outline. So we just want to make sure that regardless of where we fall into this branch, we want to make sure that we, we have set the source URL here. So either we're coming on the true side or the false side of the branch, right? So once we get to the bottom, we can go ahead and retest this and it will pull in the source URL for this. Let's go ahead and actually run this. Right. So it's going to add this markdown image syntax into that storage. And when we retest this, it should pull in that markdown. So we can either get a, a blank source URL or not. Regardless, we're going to go and combine that. So. We're putting the source URL or the markdown on top of that outline content. So we're stacking those two values. We're stacking the source URL, which is the image with the alt and URL. And the, below it would be the actual content. So it'd be like an image and it's an outline. And every time we add it uh, to the storage, we're going to go and use the append. We're going to be keep adding into our content. That's how we build the article since, and we're pending it with this separator. So it's a uh, two two line breaks in between each outline article and we're going to be storing the scope into a run and uh, so it doesn't bleed into the other automation and once we're done we're going to go and just clear the source url so that on the next loop the source url is empty it's just a nice way to just clear that section image so after it's gone through all the different sections from top to bottom so you can see that loop so once we finish this section, we've gone through all the different outlines. We've, we've generated the articles for outlines and the images. Uh, it's going to go and wrap it up by getting the article body. Let's go and zoom in. 
and we're going to go and use the same key that we're using to append into this storage, which we're using here. So if you do a retest, so this will pull in the entire article as you go through all the different sections of the article is going to go and compile all these outlining sections with the images. So you can see here the different H2s and the article. So this is the complete article that we've got. So once we got the article, we're going to go and start writing the introduction. So the article's introduction and in conclusion is a separate a step so that we can customize this prompt a little bit. Let's go and look at the introduction first. So act as, as an SEO specialist with experience in crafting, engaging, and optimized article introductions. Given the title, so this is the article's title, write two, two to three paragraphs. Once again, you can tweak this SEO optimized introduction that seamlessly integrates the provided keywords. So we're using the terms used for the content terms and set a captiva captivating premise for the readers. Ensure that introduction reflects the key points and overall structure of the articles outlined in this comma are separated. So this is the reason why we comma separated the outlines earlier so that we can put it inside of the prompt so that when we create an introduction, we know what the article is about so it can talk about what is discussed in the article. That's why I've said it here, a comma separated outline titles and the article content of this body. So we're also giving it some content so we're passing in the entire article so it knows exactly and not just come up with some random introduction that really doesn't really pertain to the overall theme of the article. So we're passing also the context here, which we built up when we gone through and looked through the outlines, right? So that's the introduction, S similar thing that we're doing here for the conclusion, except that we're doing a concluding here, but we're also doing a paragraph as you optimize conclusion and that cohesive wraps up the key points discussed in the article, making sure that to use the provided keywords. We're recycling the, the key terms that was returned back from a new writer. Ensure that conclusion reinforces the key takeaways from the outline. So we're passing in the outlines again, so reinforce uh, what was mentioned in the, the outlines and leave the readers with a strong lasting impression from this article. And we're passing in the, the body of the article again. The article should, uh, the conclusion should be engaging, summarizing the article concisely while encouraging readers to take any desired actions or continue exploring related topics. Include an H2 header in Markdown. When you execute this, it's gonna go and uh, look something like this. Actually, let's go and retest this. It should include the H2 headers with the conclusion. It should include a conclusion and you have a conclusion, which is a two or three paragraphs depending on what you've said. Right. So once it's done, we got the article body, we got the, the images with the introduction and the conclusion. We're gonna wrap it up and uh, combine the articles. So right now everything is separated. You got your body, you got your introduction and conclusion separately. So we're just gonna go and add a code here. We're passing in the article, the conclusion and introduction. So this is coming from the storage and it's coming from the Straco call. So we're just gonna combine all those into one. So we're going to go and separate it by two line breaks for each. So that we're going to go and add the introduction. We're going to do a two line breaks and we're passing in the article, two line breaks and the conclusion. And we're removing some code that doesn't really pertain here. We're just going to replace the slash n backward to backward slash n with an empty space. We got the full article. Since we didn't run the whole thing, this is a temp sample test. It didn't really include the actual article. This is the full markdown output of the article. And if we want to publish to WordPress, you need to convert that markdown into HTML. So that's why we're including the text helper action, which includes this markdown to HTML action. So for the content, we're gonna pass the previous step and we're gonna go with the flavor of markdown, the default of GitHub. And we're gonna keep some of the defaults set, support tables checked, and everything else should be pretty straightforward. Now we get an HTML when we run this. So we're going to get the entire, I was going to re actually retest this. So we should get everything so that we should get a introduction and some conclusion here as well. So once we get everything has completed, we can build up upon this. So the next thing we're doing here is we're grabbing all the categories that we have in our blog. So we're making a custom API call request. So we're adding a WordPress piece using the same connections pick the right connection for it and to set the correct url so this would be your 
URL and you're going to have to add uh, slash p WP JSON, the slash WP slash V2 and categories. We're just making a call to WordPress uh, for our site and we're just going to uh, get all the categories. So what we get is an array of categories. Each of these categories has an ID and has a link to that category and it has the slug and the name. We're parsing and we're converting those categories. We're gonna map it to a simpler array. So we're just gonna go and keep the ID and the name just to keep it simple. Since we don't need the other inf metadata from that categories, we're adding a code piece. We're just gonna go and pass in the categories that we received from the WordPress body. And we're passing it here. So the inputs will have the categories and we're just gonna go and do a dot map call. So we're just mapping, we're just gonna take the items from the array and we're going to map it to a simpler version without the other stuff. We're just going to keep the ID and the name. And once we execute that, we're going to get the ID, which is the identifier for that category and the name. Let's go and make a call to Straco API again. All we're doing here is we're going to go and pass in the categories and we're just going to tell it to match it to the right category. So when we make a post to WordPress, we want to make sure that the category is set correctly based on the intent or what the article is about. So we're going to go and let AI figure that out for us. All we're doing here is have a list of categories for my blog. So we're sending the entire categories that we have and give me the ID of the category that best fits the article titled and return the output as a number without additional commentary. So if it's smart enough, you're just going to give you back a single number, which best basically categorizes this article. We're just going to let AI determine which category ID matches this title of the blog article. So once we got that done, we're going to go and do a check here. So remember that we can do a rewrite of the article. So we're introducing a branch where we're checking for two things. So one is if it does not exactly match a zero, if it's a rewrite, that means that there's a post ID as associated with this. That means it's a rewrite and if the, the text matches exactly rewrite. So we want to check if the status of the record in uh, a table is also a, a rewrite. So we want to make, make sure that this is an actual rewrite and there's an actual post ID associated so we can tie that article back into the original post that we're rewriting it for. So we're either updating an existing post or we're creating a new post if it's a brand new article. Right? If it's a brand new post, we're going to go and create a new post here. So we're going to go and create a new post. And if it's a rewrite, we're going to go and use the update post. The parameters is identical, except that we're just using the different actions based on what we're trying to do. So for the create post, we're just passing in the title, the content, which is HTML. We're not sending the slug that's automatically handled for us. And for the featured image URL, we're just setting it to the URL that we generated from the earlier steps. And the categories here, we've set it to dynamic. So this is coming from the Straco call. You can either set it where you can actually just pick the categories from our existing categories, or you can actually switch to dynamic here. So if you click on this dynamic value, you can actually set it to whatever you want. You can put three or whatever. So this will allow us to pick the categories and use AI for it. We're just going to go and pick the category that we get back from Straco, which is here. So it's just like a single value. For the featured image, we're not setting this and we're just setting it to publish. So just post it automatically. Obviously you can have it as draft as well. If you would just want to double check the output first before publishing it, we can send it to draft or scheduled as well. But we're just going to go and publish it right away. And everything else should be the same. Let's go and retry on failure as well, since we're making an API call. As far as the next step, we're going to go and save the post ID. So when we're creating a a, a new post. This is how we can reference back the post ID to rewrite. If you choose to rewrite later on, we're going to go and save the post ID. We're going to store it back into a table. So what we're doing here, we're setting a storage here. We're adding a put action and we're just going to be posting on this post ID key. And whenever you make a post on, into WordPress, you're always going to get back the ID and some other metadata from that post. So all we're interested in here is the ID of the new post that we just created. And that's what we're using to set the value here. And we're storing the scope into run and we're going to get back the output. And similarly on the other side, if it's like a rewrite, we're going to go and perform the same action, except that we're using update post, 
same parameters for the post ID but we're setting the title what's important here is we're setting the post ID so this one is not available in the create post but this option for the post ID is available so we're retrieving it from a table from this post ID that, that will allow us to update that specific post based on that ID and we're setting the title we're setting the HTML content similarly we're setting the, the featured image URL and the categories coming from Straco and we're not really changing anything here we're setting it to publish straight up and we're trying a failure once you finish this it's also going to return back a post ID which we're setting it here as well to the storage for this key and which we're retrieving that we're retrieving the post ID which we're going to be updating later on when we update record in a table and then lastly we're pulling in the date helper we're getting the current date so we can determine when we publish this post in WordPress so we're using this format so if you go to update record in a table so we're using this update record it's requiring for the date publish is requiring this format so year month and day format and this type of format so we're just going to go and get current date and we're just choosing the best format available for us and we're using our time zone since my time zone is los angeles i'm using that one and i chose this which closely resembles what the date format that is expected for a table to work for setting that date the result is whatever the date is in this format and we can use that to update the record here for the update record we're setting the space data sheet and we're also setting the record id so this identifies what record we're trying to uh, update we're setting the status of publish and we're setting the content which is the markdown format optionally you can also set it to use the html if you think that looks better but i think markdown it's easier to read uh, because it's the syntax is minimal compared to html but this is like a preference the date publish is set based on the previous step which is get current date and the, we're not going to set that and we're setting the post id that we get back from either creating the new post on wordpress or when updating a post in wordpress everything else should be the same or we're adding a retry on failures here and that wraps it up for this video if you like this type of content please go and consider subscribing to my channel and i'm also on discord if you'd like to join my community as well feel free to click like on this video if you find any value and as always i hope to see you guys on the next video